This afternoon we're going to discuss a, a line that's very, very often misunderstood uh, by students of A Course in Miracles. Uh, I am responsible for what I see. It comes in a section called Responsibility for Sight in Chapter 21 of the text. Uh, to, uh, to introduce the, the discussion, uh, it's really important to understand that when the Course talks about seeing, or even more precisely, it talks about perception, it is not talking about what your eyes see. We are told so often in the, in the Course, all three books actually, that eyes don't see. You know, ears don't hear, brains don't think, bodies don't do. So if eyes don't see, and Jesus says, I'm responsible for what I see, he can't be talking about what my eyes see, because eyes don't see. Right? And while the Course sometimes is inconsistent in its form or language, it is never inconsistent in its content. So when Jesus talks about perception, he's talking about interpretation. Right? He makes this clear in a number of places in the Course. And that means that it's, it's with whom I interpret what my eyes see, or what my eyes believe they see. Do I, do I interpret what my sensory organs bring back to me, the sensory data they bring back? Do I interpret this with my ego or with the Holy Spirit? And that will determine how I perceive it. All right? if, I, if I choose the ego as my teacher, it means I'm choosing guilt as my identity. And the, and the ego tells me this guilt is so, so horrific that, that we can't stay with it. It's intolerable, the pain of this, that we have to get rid of it and project it out. So I project out my guilt, and now I see it in you. And since I'm following my ego, guilt always leads to projection, which always leads to anger and accusations of injustice. So that's how I will see you. Regardless of what your body does or doesn't do, my interpretation will be that you are a sin and you've committed a sin against me, or you've committed a sin against my loved ones, you've committed a sin against, against my, uh, my religion, my race, my government, whatever it is. And I will see you that way. And the way that I perceive you will then govern how I will, and determine, actually, how I will respond. If, on the other hand, I choose Jesus or the Holy Spirit as my teacher, then my identity is not guilt, but innocence. And so extending innocence, in the Course actually projection and innocence are the exact same, uh, projection and extension are the exact same dynamic. The difference being projection begins with guilt and extension begins with innocence. But the dynamic of what we have made real inside, we will perceive outside. And that's the Course principle of projection makes perception. I first decide what reality is mine inside, guilt or innocence, the ego of the Holy Spirit is my teacher, and that's what I will now project out or extend out and see outside. So if I see myself as innocent, I look within and, and I, I've chosen the teacher of innocence, that's what I will extend out and I'll see everyone washed with innocence. <laughs> no matter what they have done or the world has said that they've done or have, have failed to do, uh, they will still be seen as innocent children of God. So that's what I'm responsible for. I'm not responsible, for, again, for what my eyes see. I'm not, when I turn on the TV at night and I watch the news and I hear about some atrocity going on in some place in the world or community news and there's a, a serial killer loose or, or there's a rapist or a pedophile loose, all right? and I find myself making judgments about the, this person or judgments about the authorities that let this kind of thing happen, what I'm responsible for is not what the, what the pedophile is doing, or the rapist is doing, or the government is doing that's dropping bombs. I'm responsible for the way I see it, which really means I'm responsible for the teacher I have chosen. So it's really important to, to move away from the idea that when the Course talks about seeing, it's talking about what your eyes see. That would be a gross distortion of the Course's message. And of course, what's, what underlying that is the need to make the body real. And so if what I'm seeing is, is reality and I'm now responsible, and so I'm the cause of all the brutality going on in the world because I'm seeing it, then I'm making the ego thought system real by dint of making the world real, and of course our individuality is preserved seemingly forever. But if I understand that, that the Course means interpretation, which means with, whom t with which teacher am I observing this, then the, then the whole focus shifts from what my eyes are seeing out there and the world is telling me is real, it's shifting now to what my mind is doing. And of course it's that shift that's really the, the sum and substance of A Course in Miracles, that we realize that we are not bodies living in a world, we are, we are minds that are dreaming, and dreams are not reality. Uh, we're told th that the miracle establishes that we dream a dream and its content is not true. 
So the whole purpose of this course is to have us have our attention be shifted from the world outside, the world of relationships, the world of uh, at large in, ter in terms of uh, 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 world of pleasure and pain, life and death, uh, war and peace. Shift our shift our our perspective from the world out there back to our minds, and it boils down to one simple choice, which is why Jesus over and over again tells us his course is very simple: Do I choose the ego as my teacher, or do I choose him as my teacher? And the decision I make will determine the world I will see, which will then, in fact, in, in turn, determine the world I will react to, with love, gentleness, and kindness, or with anger, judgment, and hate. So the choice is always ours. And the choice is ours. The, the choice we make will depend on whether we, we want to stay rooted in the dream or to awaken from the dream and return home.